Welcome to the Science Gallery. We're here today for a big talk with a big bang. There's a big crowd here as well, so let's get it started. Um, topic is the Big Bang phrase as a question, fact or fiction, who seems to have an interest in um, the origins of our universe. It's a you know, philosophical, personal question for many people, but it's also a huge science question. Um, and as um, the Alchemist Cafe Dublin, um, we host events which engage the public in science in informal environments such as the beautiful science gallery that we're based in at the moment. What we know so far, it seemed from Hubble's graph, you could basically deduce that a certain number of years ago, we now know it's about 14 billion, the universe is concentrated literally at a point, then you have some sort of explosion of energy, space, time and matter, and the universe is basically expanding and of course cooling since then, cooling because as it expands, the um, uh, temperature will go down. See, the most topical of all is that there's this weird kind of universe you could get, which is somehow in between. It's neither closed off nor is it open, it's just kind of incredibly um, delicately balanced between the two. And it's just it's interesting that when they first came across that possibility, nobody looked into it too much because it seems so incredibly unlikely. Nobody bothered with it much. But I'll just give you a hint to tell you actually, as far as we know, that's exactly what our universe does, which is a very strange thing to balance itself. This one was to do with supernova missions. Um, out of some new data from a supernova, they discovered that the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up. Now you might say, how can that be if it's flat? But it, it, it's actually theoretically possible to have a universe that's flat, but the, the rate of expansion is actually getting quicker. You know, because you think back, remember that very first Hubble graph? Look how different now that that looks. First of all, there's this massive rapid rise for inflation, but even worse, just looking at the middle curve, say, now it's beginning to accelerate up. Instead of standing on a straight line, it begins to accelerate up. Now I'm happy to tell you that to this day, despite what some people will tell you, I don't think there's any agreement whatsoever among cosmologists about what that represents. Just why the universe should be accelerating again is a very big question. And I really like that because... It... Performer is actually quite difficult. I'm more used to a lecture theatre where the lights are low and you say what you say and then people ask questions at the end. But I must say I'm really enjoying it. Um, it is quite hard because cosmology is quite abstract, you know, so I brought along a few pictures. I don't know you could do it without pictures, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. We'll see what the questions are like. Question. Tell us what is Planck time and how it's related to the early equation of the universe. Planck time, yeah. Yeah, th this is getting back to the, um, the question was what's Planck time? Um, it's just um, the word we use for things on the quantum scale is Planck length and a Planck time. And a Planck time would be literally 10 to the minus 33, which is 1 over God knows how many million, but 10 to the power of 33, 1 over that. So it's an extreme, extremely small <coughs> interval of time. But the question is really exactly what, what, what we really want to know is what went on in that time. I, I think for me, the best way in terms of what is known in cosmology to explain it is it's very like the theory of evolution. I mean, those of a religious bent are very, very quick to point out that the, the theory of evolution by natural selection doesn't say anything about the origin. What it tells you is about natural selection. It doesn't say anything about where the first species comes from in the first place, if you know what I mean. No, there's a tragic. I mean, that's the point. It's, it's about how one thing follows its evolution. Well, cosmology is very like that. We, we still don't know a whole lot about the bang itself. And once you're coming into Planck time, you're coming into that. The reason you see so much about it, though, is um, a really easy way of putting this. We're coming in, the, the reason the singularity is such a big problem is that it's the one place where the theory of relativity, which has explained all of this so very nicely, runs into serious trouble. Because one thing we do know is that relativity works just fine until you get to about the size of the atom. Once you're down on very, very small scales like an atom, some of you will have heard of quantum physics, well, you're now in a new realm called quantum physics, which is fine, and we know lots about quantum physics, but the one thing we don't know is how gravity behaves, which is basically theory relativity tells us about gravity. How gravity behaves on the quantum scale is, is not known. There is no good theory of that. In fact, the big scale... Well, that's all we have time for here in the Science Gallery. For Villa 81, I'm Emmett Ryan.